Now let's discuss the hardware in a little more detail than before. So here's a nice geographical picture of the hardware. Starting on the west coast, we have UCSD. Uh, this red link implies a dedicated private network. We have a core uh, router in Chicago, which has a uh, network impairment device, although I must admit, We've had essentially no use of the network impairment device on the distributed system. And so it's tended to be used in dedicated mode to introduce faults, say, between CPUs and disks and things like that. Um, it's slightly surprising there are not more people wanting to do that. Um, the core router, of course, links to Internet 2 and Exceed. It says terabit here, but that's a euphemism for Exceed. And then uh, we of course can cross the uh, uh, to uh, the other the other continents, Europe, and of course China, etc., um, Asia, and other. And JONT is the European um, network. TAC has a purple line saying that that's a public uh, link. We could not afford a private link to TAC. Uh, there's a machine called Alamo there, uh, Sierra and Lima here. Florida has Foxtrot with a private network only at one gigabit. The other ones are 10 gigabits. Um, we have here Indiana University with its a collaboration with Purdue. And we have Chicago with the hotel system in Chicago, University of Chicago. And this particular list here is actually given in more detail on the next slide which summarizes the uh, systems that are available. So here we have the systems. We have, starting at the top, we have uh, the IBM iDataplex, the largest system with 1024 cores, 256 CPUs, that's the machine in India. Uh, we just upgraded its secondary storage, um, so it has uh, two terabytes per, per CPU. Um, one of the things we found from the early purchases, we did not drop but enough disk on each node, because we are, with all these different usages we're given the nodes, we need plenty of disk space to support that. Plus some people, when they do Hadoop and things like that, really need um, plenty of disks. Um, then the next machine in, in size is Animo, 192 CPUs, 768 cores. Um, that's a Dell cluster, that's a Texas. Um, then we have Hotel, Sierra, and Foxtrot. Those are IBM I data plexes at Chicago, San Diego, and Florida, respect respectively. We have a Cray, small Cray XT5M at uh, Indiana University uh, with a significant number of CPUs. Um, since they knew it now have the cluster mode of running, it's actually found more use because it doesn't have to be used in purely Cray mode. Uh, then we have uh, at the bottom here, we have four essentially specialized systems. Bravo, Delta, and Echo are at Indiana University. They each have 12 terabytes of disk uh, per node. And uh, they also have substantial memory per node. And um, the largest amount of memory, in fact, is um, Echo, which has um, whatever it has, uh, 292 gigabytes per CPU. Uh, Bravo and Delta have half that, 192 gigabytes per two CPU node. Uh, whereas, as we see, um, Echo is 384 um, gigabytes of memory per, per node, and that allows it to offer around five terabytes of memory in shared memory mode using scale MP. Um, Delta is special in that it has GPUs as well. So Delta is large memory, GPUs, large disk. Bravo is large memory, large disk. Echo is large memory, large disk, distributed shared memory. And Lima at San Diego is a, um, a solid state disk system. Here's just pictures of them. It shows all the systems we have. 
Well, as you see that, the fact I can put them all on one page says they can't be very big. Um, and they all just, um, they all look like modern computer systems. Here's the discussion of the storage. The largest storage system, uh, so-called Xanadu system, is at Indiana University with 180 terabytes. And then the, all the other sites have uh, storage hardware. Um, um, typically operated by some variant of network file system available to um, to users. There's also backup storage uh, at Indiana University uh, for archival use, as well as the storage. Of course, another key feature of the system of the system is the support. We have a Drupal portal with the usual functionality. That's where you. Uh, uh, log into the portal, you get your um, projects, or, or possibly you can also get now projects through the Exceed uh, portal. We have a ticket system for help. Uh, we have a relatively small user facing support staff and system admin group. We have a small outreach group. And we have a very strong system admin collaboration with the software group. Now we uh, come to uh, discussing some of the projects. Uh, we gave uh, several in the, in the overview. We will not repeat those um, here. The first example project is uh, largely with Chicago using Nimbus. And it's the um, important Atlas uh, particle physics experiment, which runs at the Large Hadron Collider in CERN. And they've been experimenting uh, with FutureGrid and also machines in Canada um, <coughs> to explore cloud computing for a large hadron collider uh, experimental data analysis. And uh, you can see here we use this Condor, a workload management system, and a um, cloud scheduler. And the Condor actually manages the virtual machines. All right, so this uh, slide gives a little more detail on the Atlas uh, use of, um, of uh, FutureGrid. Here's the number of completed jobs from March of 2012 to uh, October 2012. And here's a, it's a daily plot. You can see it's up to six, over 6,000 per day in August. Here is uh, the average number of uh, slots used over the same time period, number of simultaneously running jobs. Uh, well, each of them takes one core. These are not parallel jobs. And the overall efficiency is around uh, 42%. So that, that last remark uh, suggests the importance of improving IIAS um, infrastructure as a service utilization. That's another one of the projects on Future Grid. This is not part of the Atlas one. The Atlas one just illustrated why you might need to do that. And uh, here's a typical trace from uh, an ANL argon cluster, which is used to motivate this work. And to try to get good utilization of infrastructure, the, this particular research project, Marshall, Keiki, he and Freeman, looked at preemptible in, uh, virtual machine instances, uh, which allowed you to run. And then if an urgent interactive job came through, you could preempt the running job. And then you had various uh, management strategies for this contention, which uh, was the object of the research. So here's an indication of what happens if you do uh, disable the, the uh, preemption. You get a utilization of around 40%. That was actually what uh, Atlas saw. Then with preemption enabled, you're allowed to uh, get an average utilization of about 80, 84%. All right, now we come to a, a different um, future group project. I'm investigating the SSD disks on Lima. In fact, this, this is details of uh, actually something which was reported in overview fashion in the overview MOOC uh, that we had. Um, so if you look at Lima, it's a small cluster, and you've got eight nodes and 128 cores. 
but it does have solid state uh, disk 480, 480 gigabytes on each node. And the, this initial study compared the uh, solid state disk and the traditional hard disk on the node uh, on the uh, Hadoop distributed file system HDFS and um, it plots the uh, relative performance of the two types of disk as a function of the file size uh, in HDFS. So it's clear that uh, not surprisingly, SSDs do uh, lead to significant performance improvement in this case, which is clearly quite important. And here's another project, the uh, Ocean Observatory Initiative, and uh, that's been um, worked with the uh, Nimbus Group, and um, they are looking. They're actually building what you might call dedicated science clouds using uh, Nimbus technology. That's the uh, regional Nimbus clouds, and then they go to commercial clouds, essentially in cloud busting fashion. So this uh, case here is an important case because it's an example of sensors. Uh, ocean observatories are a large number of sensors. And sensors are very suitable to clouds because clouds are what you need for erratic data. And sensors tend to give you erratic data. Sometimes they can give you a lot of data, sometimes almost none. And you can instantiate the cloud support on demand for your sensors. So Sensors and clouds are a very important set of activities where, where that, that is actually going on, and actually outside FutureGrid in different cases. Although FutureGrid has had other sensor cloud um, research support.